Good evening, Facebook. Thank you for coming in tonight to New Foundation Church online Bible study experience. I don't want to let you all know that tonight we're going to continue on with our love for your enemies. It's a sermon that I started on this past Sunday that I really believe if you haven't heard it, I believe you can go back and listen to it on our New Foundation Church page. I really believe it'll bless your life. God is saying that we have to get into a place now to where love is in continuous operation, not just for people that we love, but continuous operation for people that don't love us. Or we may not show no love, but we got to change that. And I'm going to give you scripture by scripture tonight as to why the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, need to be within your heart so that it will begin to actually help um, put your faith into action. Because without faith, without love, faith doesn't work. Faith worketh by love. So let me know where you're coming in tonight. Uh, comment on the comment line because I do go back over our videos and to hear it, view it, to see who's actually out there actually uh, listening to the words that I want to be ministering on tonight. We do have some people here tonight here in the sanctuary, but I do know we have online people. So let me know where you're coming in from. Just comment on that. I'm just glad to have you with me tonight. But I've already told those who are in the sanctuary where we're going to start as far as reading the scripture of tonight. So if you would get your Bible ready, get it in hand, whether you got your Bible or if you got a Bible, get your Bible in hand. Because everything that I'm going to explain to you tonight is going to come straight from the Word of God so that you'll know what God says for you to believe. And so I want you to turn your Bible with me and I want you to turn to John chapter, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. And I'm going to be reading from verse 7 to 21. Um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through verse 21. And I'm going to break it down. It's going to help you tonight. So while you turn there, I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you in the mighty and righteous name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I give myself completely unto you. I just thank you, Lord God, as I decrease, you increase in me. Convey your word through me as a vessel of clay. Father, I just ask you to let my ears be inclined to hear what you're saying tonight unto your people, your precious flock. Father, you desire for them to, to be built up, to be encouraged. To bring them into a place to where the, the eyes of their understanding has enlightenment. Lord God, it comes from your word. Father, let the revelation flow. Let them catch the revelation, Lord God. Let them hide the revelation in their heart, Lord God, so that they may not sin against evil, but they may mature and be doers of the word and not mere hearers only as in deceiving themselves. Lord, let the deception in tonight. Oh, Lord, we know we have the power and authority over the works of darkness and nothing by any means shall harm us. And so, Father, I praise and thank you. In Jesus' name as I pray, let the people of God say amen. Amen. If you got 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, we start off at verse number 7. And it says this, it says, Beloved, let us not, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And know of God. Now let me stop right there. It says that it says beloved. Now that word beloved means that he first loved you. He said, Let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. Now, in order for you to be born of God, you have to become born again. When you become born again, that means you come into the knowledge through salvation on how you became justified by faith in Christ Jesus. That's what that's what the love that you were born in. Now, because you're born in this love, you know of God. How do you know God? You know somebody when you begin to have a relationship with them. I know people that say they know God, but they don't have a relationship with them. So how do you say you know them? It's almost like somebody who's looking at TV and claiming that they know the actor of their favorite television show, and they can tell you everything about them, but they don't know them other than the television too. But the way they talk, they're trying to convince us that they know the person. So when we know the Lord personally, his love exudes through us. And when his love exudes through us, we show compassion to those we love and even to those who are the unloved, who don't feel like no one loves them. We even show love to our enemies. I'm trying to, get, I'm trying to lay a foundation here tonight so you can stay along with me. Let me finish reading verse number eight. It says this, but he that loveth knoweth not, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. So when no one gives you love, they don't know God. Remember this, if God was to despise us for our sins, he would have never sent Jesus into this world to save us. John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know the scripture, that he gave 
He gave love in order to return love back. In other words, when I give something out of love, what I'm trying to get back is, is, is that same love. That's why we give. When somebody says they love you and they don't give, that, that's that same words with no execution. God, would, God said his word, but then he executed it. His execution was man became flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In other words, the word came embodied into a flesh body, and we know who that is. That's Jesus Christ, who is grace and truth. So therefore, the Father honored his words by his actions. And so I'm telling you tonight that in order for us to know God, it comes through our express actions towards people. Look what it says right here in um, finish verse 8. It says, For he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And in this was manifested the love of God to us, Lord, that because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live, live through him. Now, don't, don't beat me up for what I'm about to say, but I'm just trying to break down a revelation to you to help you understand this. It says that we might live through love. Are you following me? That we might live through love. That says him, he's talking about Jesus, right? But it says that we may live through him. But if you go back up to that very next verse, back, go back up the verse, in verse 8, it says God is love. You see what I'm saying? So that we may dwell in love. Because when we operate in this love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, it, it helps us to walk in alignment with his will, and our faith will be constantly on or in effect or in action. And, and, it, and, it, and it shows forth a, a order in our lives that we're willing to be obedient unto God, and when we keep God's commandments, it shows God that we love him. Without obeying his word, you don't show no love for him. So if I don't obey God's word and show no love for him, then how is it that I can love somebody that hates me? Y'all follow me tonight. Stay with me tonight. Look what it says in verse number 9. It says, In this was manifested the love of God to us word, because that God sent his only God Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation of our sin. Now, what does propitiation mean? That's payment. That's, that means that he was our, one translation says he's our atoning sacrifice. Atoning means to cover. But I like it the word he was our, our, um, um, our, uh, what, what, what's the word you want to give me? It's not just atonement. His blood was not just atoning blood. His blood was remitting blood because it blotted out our transgression, our sins against us. When the blood of Jesus cleanses us and washes us all, it washes away that residue of sin. Sin cannot abound um, greater than the blood of Jesus because there's no greater love than the Lord himself. So there's no sin that's so great that God cannot forgive. But look, look what he says right here in verse number um, number 11. He says, beloved. Say, I'm beloved. I'm beloved. Y'all got to get that in your spirit. I'm beloved. I'm beloved. You know why you got to get that in your spirit? Because some of you ain't loving yourself. When you don't love yourself, your expectation is low, and then you begin to start attracting in and everything. I'm talking to somebody. You wonder why relationships have not worked in your life because you don't love yourself enough to have standards. Hmm. And the standard is love, the righteous standard, abiding in love. When you abide in love, it, it, it develops you to have a closeness with God because you're now dependent upon God to navigate your life versus as you're trying to be the, the captain of your own life and do what you want to do. You can't do that in the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, we have a Lord and we have a Savior who gave us a, a gift, a comforter, who better known as the Holy Spirit, who helps and lead and guides us through every area of our life. But look what he says right here in verse number um, 11, I mean, verse 10, number 12. He says, no, let me leave verse right 11. It says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. Notice this. He didn't put... 
a a um a certain amount of love on who you give love to. He said we are to love one another. So you're supposed to love people who don't believe in what you believe. You gotta love people who don't like you. You gotta love people who don't like the world. We gotta love them because we cannot allow what they don't know, which the understanding that we gain of having fellowship with the Lord. We can't allow what they don't know and their actions of not showing love to affect us the way we get out of love. You know, I'm going to show you why. Because when it says right here in verse number 12, it says, no man has seen God at any time. And if we love one another, God dwells within us or dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. That means his love is matured in you. It's time for us to mature in love. It's time for us to begin to man up. It's time for us to woman up. It's time for us to step up in our maturity. But in order for us to do that, we're not to grow. We don't grow by ourselves. We grow as the Lord grows us. And he grows us in love. Because look what he says in verse 13. He says, hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us because he have given us of his spirit. And we know that we have seen, I'm sorry, verse 14, and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Think about this for a moment. If God was going to wait on mankind to get it right, mankind would have never gotten it right. It will always, mankind would have always been on a, what I call a crash course of destruction. But God did not want us to be destroyed. That's how much he thought of us. I, I want y'all to write this down. God is not a ruling dictator. God is not a ruling dictator in heaven looking to punish somebody or looking to punish you for the wrong you've done. He's not looking to punish you. His love is characterized by his grace and forgiveness and is eternal and is unconditional. See, God put a clause into his love, and that clause in love says that you have to repent. You remember what I said Sunday, that when you confess your sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive, listen, to forgive, and then the, the up part of that is to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's, that's what happens to us, is that we got a clause in there that, that, that in order for us to receive this love, we have to repent. What does repent mean? The Greek word metanoia means to change your way of thinking, to change your mind. But when you change your mind, you have to replace it with something from, from what you used to do. You got you to gotta get rid of what you used to do. What you used to do was keeping you out of this love, but what you're now getting ready to do and you have, and have applied it to your life is the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. When you apply that love, that's when your faith is in continuing operation, and now you're in a place where you please God. And now you're in a place where you, you will know you're worthy. You won't allow your feelings to beat you up when you miss the mark. And when you miss the mark, you make, make you feel like you're unworthy to receive forgiveness. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Lord. Yes, Father. There are some of you who are here viewing, you, that are viewing me not right now tonight, and some of you that's here in this sanctuary tonight, you are beating up on yourself because you missed the mark, and this mark or this, this sinful thing has, has damaged your heart and has, has wounded your soul to where you're doing a replay of it every time you go to sleep. You do a replay of it even when you get ready to go to work. Because it could be somebody on a job. It could be a former spouse. It could be a former girlfriend, boyfriend, or it could be a family member. It could be somebody that has now has damaged your life to where you have been thinking, the Lord said, you've been thinking that there's no recovery from this. But I'm here to tell you tonight to serve notice on that lie from the father of lies that you can recover from this. All it takes for you is to repent. And as you repent, you cry out and say, Lord, forgive me for wasting precious time living in my wounded heart. Lord, forgive me for, for not even receiving your forgiveness because I've been too busy living in a life of condemnation, not thinking that I can be redeemed or not thinking that I can be, be cleansed of this. When you can be cleansed of this. 
God wants you cleansed of this. God wants you healed. God wants you whole. Whole where? In your spirit, man, and even in your soul. He wants you complete and whole. But in order for you to know this, you got to understand what that love means. It's just like I said, God is not a ruling dictator in heaven uh, looking to punish people for their wrong. That's why he gave you repentance. That's why he gave you forgiveness. His, his love is characterized by his grace. Who is grace and truth? Jesus Christ. His love is filled with forgiveness. Every time you wake up, you got a chance to be forgiven if you repent. That's, that's his eternal nature. Remember, Jesus says, I didn't come in here to destroy the world. I came in here to save. Now, there would be people that would be destroyed, but they're destroyed because of their lack of fellowship or their denouncing of, of even knowing God or saying there is no God or, or rejecting the, the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. There would be no sacrifice greater than Jesus Christ. So by you rejecting that love, you're telling God as you rebel in your heart that I want the punishment that I'm going to get. Anybody that's in hell right now was, was sit there by themselves. God didn't send them there. They rejected him. They reject to live in a life, to live the abundant life that he prescribed for us to live in Christ. They rejected that. They rejected times to repent. They rejected when people try to correct them. They rejected truth. They wanted to live a life in error. They wanted to live a life in lawlessness because that what was pleasing and fueling their soul. Their mind and their eyes was blinded by the God of this world, by keeping them in a place of unbelief. And this is why it's so important that we, the people of the body of Christ, do not allow our gospel, the gospel which is a message, to be hidden. Our message has to be seen. Our message has to be heard. People need to become liberated in their soul. It is that anointed message that's going to remove the burden and that's going to destroy the yoke that is on those people's lives. Those people that are bound with the yoke of oppression, sickness, and disease. Those people who are bound in their heart thinking that they can't be forgiven. Those people who are blinded to the truth. There are people right here that's thinking about contemplating suicide. Lord, is self-destruct. There are people right now trying to, the spirit of murder, trying to go and try to take somebody else's life. I'm trying to tell you this spirit that is that that has invaded the earth is running rampant right now throughout the world, trying to control and crash economies, trying to send people in a place of panic and fear. And here God is saying, I'm not, not moved by this, but where is my church in the midst of this? It's going to take a church. It's going to take a people in the church who says, my God is Jesus Christ. That's who I follow. I will not bow down and serve Baal. I will not bow down to serve any political party. I will not bow down to serve even the most affluent or influential person in the world. I will not bow down to serve the spirit of man and call money. I will not bow down to let my enemies make me think that they're going to back me into a corner to think that I'm going to keep my mouth closed for not sharing the testimony of my faith. No one can do that. My God has been too good to me. I'm going to express this love as long as I have breath in my body and blood running through my veins and that's that's what you need to do. You need to serve notice on the enemy tonight to let the people that don't like you, you know what? I'm not going to be like you. I'm going to be like what God called me to be. And because I'm going to be like what God called me to be, I'm going to operate and abide in this love. Because as I abide in this love, that love right now casts out all fear. Because that fear is trying to cause torment. And that binding in love will help me to stay away from the way the wicked one can touch me not. The only reason why the wicked one is having his way because you're not abiding in love. You're doing your love in a selective way. You're selecting to choose who you want to love. You're being partial. You have to remain impartial in this. You have to love your enemies. Look what he says in verse number uh, eight, eight, uh, 17. Well, did I read 16? Nope, 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 nope. Let me go back. Verse number 15. It says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the, the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. So this is how you stay anchored in love. Christ, the hope of the Lord, be in your heart. When Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, he's in your heart. He's in your heart, and he'll also be seen in your actions. Meaning that your actions won't be just for people that go to church. Your actions will be people for the people in the world. 
to show that you are the example of Christ Jesus in the earth. You are an ambassador of Christ. Look what it says in verse 16. And we have known and believed the love of God, a love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. This is how, this is how you obey faith. Stay in love. When you stay in love, guess what? Your feelings won't be running all over the place. You won't be feeling some type of way. It won't be complicated. It'll be simple. Why? Because you're about in love. See, when you're about in love, when people are trying to provoke you to anger, you won't be moved. Oh, so what they talking about you? Tell them to keep talking about it. That's free appetite. Because now I've got eyes on me that wasn't once on me. Amen. And I'm going to make sure now that I have the eyes of those who spew and hate against me, I'm going to walk and be confident. You know how you walk and be confident? <laughs> Some of y'all need to get up, get up off the couch. Walk in. You got to walk in your room and get this step to stand up you can just say, you know what? I'm going to do this thing and pass the door. I'm going to walk in my job tomorrow. You, you see, you got you to change up some things. I'm trying to help some of y'all tonight. You got to change up some things. How do you do that? Abide in his love. Because when you abide in his love, look what it says in verse number 17. He says, here it is our love made perfect. Our love made perfect that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in the world. Listen, now, I know it says in the day of judgment, it's talking about the end of time, but guess what? Until then, I'm going to still walk in my boldness. That's why I told you got to do this. See, that boldness means you got confidence. That boldness means you spend the time with the Lord, because the Lord will make you confident in who you are. It's nothing like seeing a person who is confident in who they are. And I'm not talking about somebody who's uh, arrogant or somebody who is uh, puffed up having a haughty spirit because love is not an action. Oh, yes, I hear you, Lord. When you see somebody who is living a life in a, in a haughty, have a haughty spirit or a living in pride, the love of the Father is not in them. They, don't even let them, yeah, I hear you, Lord. Don't even let them convince you that they are saved. Because when you become born again, the old nature may have been pride, or may have had a haughty spirit, but that had to die. Mm -hmm. That had to die with you because when you came to, 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 to become saved, you said you confessed your sins, you were a sinner. And you were in need of salvation. And salvation, you believed in the heart that Jesus died for your sins. You know, you know what you did to get saved. You confessed with your mouth as your heart believed. And you called or cried upon the name of the Lord, and you got saved. And now you saved. So that means the old nature, the old you, is under the blood. Quit, try, quit letting people provoke you to come out. Oh, they don't know. I don't, I don't know. That, that Tina and me going to come out. Oh, well, why thought your name was Michelle? Why well, thought your name was Rachel? Why you got another name? You know what it is? That's double-mindedness. That means that's part of the area you don't want to let go of. You got to let go of that old you. It's under the blood. We're trying to resurrect it. Let me finish reading. I know we got to be sharing here. I ain't talking about you. Or one viewing online. I ain't talking about you. I just made a connection. Please don't get offended tonight. Oh, he called my name. No, I didn't. I'm just using that as an example. That's all. That's all. Look what it says in verse number uh, 18. It says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment, and he that feared is not made perfect in love. And it says in verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. That's why he called you beloved. He, listen, he loved you when you said, who God out. Matter of fact, he loved you before you even said, who God out. Matter of fact, he loved you when you were kicking in your mother's womb. He loved you the day you was brought into existence. Oh, yes, Lord, I hear you. Listen, he didn't have to think about your purpose while you were in your mother's womb. He was already in your mother. Now, I think it was in your mother and your father. Oh, I hear you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So what, when your parents have not been there in your life, God has always been there in your life. If you are viewing me tonight, it's only by the love of God that you're still here tonight, that God carried you through when one of your parents or both of your parents were nowhere around to be found. 
It was God's hand on your life, navigating you through the troubled seas of life. And even when you felt like you were abandoned, his love was clothing you to make sure that you didn't give up. It was him. It was nobody else. I can relate to that. Days and times and months that go by the way you want your, your father to be there. Your father is nowhere to be found. He's, he, Jesus is the absentee father. He would never leave you nor forsake you. That's his word. But look what he says right here. He says, uh, verse 20, it says, If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a what? Liar. Like my mama said, a king liar. <laughs> she was hitting that. She'd be laughing. They are liar because they haven't seen God, but yet they look at you every day and they don't show no love towards you. Let me finish reading. He says that, um, verse 20, if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? This is, this is, uh, yes, Lord, I hear you. Operating in this love is, is the practice of you living in Christ. But those who are not operating in this love and say they love God, those are the people that are filled with selfishness. Be, be very careful about this self-love agenda. This self-love is saying you got to love yourself more than you love anybody else. That to me is a disproportionate love. It's not appropriated right. The proper appropriation of love is I love God because he first loved me. Then I love myself as I love others. You see how trickery the enemy sits in? Um, today is, today is Wednesday. Today is self-love today. But you did self-love on Monday. You did self-love on Tuesday. You don't do self-love on throwback Thursday tomorrow. <laughs> And then you're going to throw in an extra little flavor of self-love on Friday night. You ain't talking to somebody. Be careful of that because when you start loving yourself more than you should, that's selfishness. That's not the love of God. And when you shift over to anything of the flesh, you just turn your faith off. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. It doesn't mean you just turn it off. Because, see, God can't lie. He gave you a measure of faith, like he dealt unto every man a measure of faith. That, that we live by, but when you get over into the flesh, because God is not in the flesh, um, you turn off the measure of faith to say, you know what, I got it from here, and I'm going to do it my way. But look what it says in verse 21, it says this, and this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God, loveth, love his brother also. I have, what, I have what? A siblings. And I love all of them. I have to. Because, not just because they're my blood brother, but even in this text, he's not talking about your sibling. He's talking about your fellow man. Let's, let's, let's break the, the, the boundaries of just loving people in our family. We got to send that love outside of our family. Not just those who are in the body of Christ, but loving those who are in the world who live in world. Showing them that expression of this agape love will show them that God sent you as a messenger of hope. Because you don't know who you encountered today that was on the brink of taking their life tonight. Either you can be an asset to the kingdom or you can become a kingdom liability. Because just because now you've got to say, you ain't thinking about nobody else. To me, that's a liability. Because God can't use you because you're not willing to share the message with anybody. you just thinking about yourself. Me, myself, and I. Get me, myself, and I off your mind and begin to think about the Lord and all that he's done for you. And when you think that way, it helps you to uh, get into a place to where you can be a conduit, an effective conduit, to where God can use you 
to be a blessing unto other people. I'll read uh, three more verses of scriptures before I close out tonight. But I hope you're getting something out of this tonight. You got to get past. You got to get past your emotions, and the only way you're gonna do that, you got to get yourself girded up. Uh, if Cain and I stand, I have knowledge of the truth. This is what you have to do. You have to do this. If you're gonna walk by faith and not by sight, you've got to get understanding in God's word. I'm gonna read something to you over in Romans chapter five, verse eight. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says this. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his love, his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God commended his love. That word commended, he demonstrated. Is that what I was saying earlier? He demonstrated. How do, I, how do I look like I tell you I love you, but I don't do no demonstration? Love without demonstration is just mere words. You saying something to me just to say something to try to push me off but you have no actions to it. God didn't think that way. When God sent his son in the world, it was this demonstration of his love towards mankind. He didn't leave mankind from the transgression of man's fall in the dark. He didn't leave man high and dry like some of you do with some people high and dry. You see those people are in need of God's express love, but you won't say nothing. Oh, yes, Lord, I heard you. All you do is sit in your house and read your Bible and get your word to keep it to yourself and you don't share it with nobody. You self-absorbed. You're not effective in the kingdom. The kingdom can't even rely upon you because you're not willing to share the message. If we're not willing to sow the word of God to people, how are we expecting people to change? If the message is not being preached, if the message is not being lived, how are we expecting people to change if the ones who are the agent of change are not giving out the understanding or sharing the understanding that brought about the change in them? How are we going to do that if we're not sharing the good news? Think about this. God said, I love the world. I'm going to send my love towards mankind. While they're still sinners, I'm going to save them. I'll allow Christ to die. That's what the Father said. I'll allow Christ to die on the cross because I want to attain a family. I want to redeem the, I want to redeem mankind back. I want to make it available to everybody. It ain't exclusivity to no Christians or not this evangelical move. That's another story, but I ain't getting nothing going in that. It ain't, a, it ain't a club of exclusivity to where we don't want any other people coming in. No, I want everybody coming in. I want, everybody, I want everybody to receive the invitation. Just like it was freely given to me or freely presented to me, and I freely received what was given, then I'm going to freely present it to everybody else who want to hear it. And those who don't want to hear it, I'm not going to go away talking bad about them. I'm going to keep pressing on and find somebody who's, sitting, who's willing to sit and listen to hear what the message of reconciliation is all about. But Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says this. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. So I said, I live in the body, I now live by faith. In who? In the Son of God. I live by faith in Jesus Christ, who loved me and gave himself for me. When you understand that, that, that Christ died for you and you begin to make this, this testimony personal, and, and share your personal testimony with complete strangers to let them know that, hey, there's a God that loves you. He, he gave me his love, and I want to share his love with you. Can I share the message with you? And if they say no, well, if you, since you say no, I, I love you, and can I just pray for you? And if they say no, I'm going to go away, I'm going to pray for you anyway. But you know what? Have a great day. We, we, we got to exit out. Putting an impression on them that door, and when we leave, they'll say, wait a minute. 
Why was that lady so nice? Why was that man so nice? Why were they nice to me? Do they not know what I've done? See, what's happening, what has a hold on them, and the reason why they wouldn't open up to listen to the message of reconciliation, because they're in bondage to what they've done wrong, and they have a devil who has bewitched them and tell them that there's no way they can come out of their situation. They can't be forgiven, so they're operating and living in condemnation. And here you have the message of reconciliation and set them free. And it takes your actions of being consistent in God's love to show them that I'm not bound by what you bound. But guess what? I'm free. I was once bound, but you can get free too. But in order for you to show that is that your actions has to be like that with everybody and not selective people or select a set group of people. You know how you do. You behave a certain way around your friends, but then when you're around strangers, you want to act. <laughs> Stuck up. Conceited. And you want to use the, sh the, the, the I'm shy card. You ain't shy. You be talking all kind of talk. So open up your mouth and share the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. My last scripture here, I want y'all to write this down. I was over in Psalms chapter 136. Psalms 136, verse 26. Psalms 136, verse 26. Psalms 136, verse 26. I had another scripture I meant to. Oh, yeah. I, I'm going to give you that last one. I got to give you this one too. But we're going to read 136, 26. It says this Give thanks to God of heaven, his love endures forever. So this is why he's been trying to get y'all to get his love. His love endures forever. This is how you may endure your problem when you abide in love. Then you may endure. You may endure the contradiction that's trying to get you to buy into his lies. The lies is trying to tell you that his love don't work. But I'm telling you right here, according to this verse right here, his love endures forever. It endures. One church says his mercy is endure forever. Well, that's his love. He's merciful on you. When you, when you show mercy to somebody who you know they deserve punishment, but you don't, you don't put the punishment on them, that's mercy. Because God is merciful. Just like what I read earlier, God is not looking to punish somebody. He he's sitting on his throne saying, you know, today I'm going to send 10,000 people to hell. No, he's not thinking like that. He's trying to say, the 10,000 people that don't know me, I got to send some laborers out. That's, that's worthy of my hire, worthy of hire to go and witness to them. And the thing about it is when this life ends, we're going to stand before God and we're going to see our whole life where people was trying to witness to you to get you saved. And you know they did not because you don't remember them like it was yesterday. See, see, we, we sometimes try to say, oh, we got temporary amnesia. You won't have no amnesia when you stand before the throne of God. Because this is going to be recalled right there in front of your face. You're like, oh, I remember him. Oh, I remember him. Oh, I remember that lady. I always come and say, Jesus, save. And you rejected me. And so the Lord said, because you rejected me, this is your punishment. You, by your own will, determined where you wanted to spend eternity. That's how powerful your will is. You determine by your own will. It's by your will that you determine if I'm going to live a life in Christ, operating in the love of God. If I'm going to do this, then I need to do this. I need to, I need to get understanding in this. That's why I'm going to be preaching this until we get this as a church body. And even those who are viewing online, I want you to get this because there's a harvest waiting to be claimed. And I'm not talking about the harvest of things, because we, we've been too thing-driven. I'm talking about a harvest of souls that need to be one for the king. That's why he said the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few because the laborers are not operating in love. You're not operating in love. You're not going to go share your message with anybody because you don't need by yourself. Enough of that. Last scripture. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. I hope y'all get some of this tonight. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to be reading verse 38 and verse 39. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and verse 39. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 38, verse 39, it says this. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that means there's nothing to separate you from that. Now, because nothing will separate you that is talking about the, talking about the heart of the Father. Nothing can separate you from that love. Now, you can step out of that love. You step out of that love when you're being provoked by fear. You know why fear won't provoke you? Because, see, fear can't cause torment. Remember what we're in 1 John 4, 18? When fear provokes you, if you abide in love, it can't, it can't have its effect on you. Because that perfect love casts out. You, you cast out all fear. Because fear is trying to provoke you to believe in it, to respond in the flesh, so it can begin to torment you. Remember, the flesh doesn't prompt to do anything. The flesh doesn't even bring glory to God. So that's why he tells us to abide in love. Say, I'm going to abide in perfect love. I'm going to abide in perfect love. You too on that Facebook page, abide in perfect love. Because when you abide in that perfect love, that fear... <laughs> It's the effects of fear can't get a hold of you because it can't touch you because you're abiding in perfect love. And that's God. No, no, God is love. Now, he says things over here. Paul says things right here. He gave you several examples of things that will try to separate you. Look what he says. He says he's persuaded. He's he's. He, he said, I am persuaded. That means I'm beyond doubt. I am sure. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers. What is he trying to tell you? All these folks that are sitting around broadcasting like, oh, the second wave is going to be worse than the first wave. I don't care how bad the first wave was. I don't care how the third wave, the fifth wave, he ain't going to be able to take and separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. God promised to cover me. God promised to keep me. God promised me that he is my place of refuge. God promised me that he is my mighty strong tower. God promised me that he is my fortress. God promised me that when weapons are formed against me, it won't prosper. And every lying tongue that comes up against me, I'm able to condemn. Why? Because that was a promise. Yes. And when you know the promise, you have the confidence. You're confident that when things try to come against you, you'll shake it off. That's why Paul, when he was bit, by that viper, he shook it off. And people was like, he don't die or he committed sin. What happened? What? How was he able to do that? When you abide in love, everything that the devil throws at you, you'll be able to withstand it because you submitted to him. Yes. When you stay submitted, what are you submitted in? You submitted to God. Submitted to God how? In love. How? In Christ. That way the Satan will be able to flee because everything he's thrown at you you didn't buy into it, and you wasn't buying into what he was provoking you to do. He'll leave you for a season. But even though when he leaves you for a season, I he tempted you just like he tempted Jesus there in the wilderness over in Matthew chapter, chapter 4. He watched to see if you were going to continue continuing this word. Remember when Jesus says, you are my disciples, and you, as you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's continuing in it. That shows consistency. Consistency brings breakthrough, not in things, but breakthrough in maturity. I say consistency brings forth breakthrough in maturity before the things show up. Some of us want the things and remain immature. God's not going to allow you to get a thing for you to be destructive with the thing. He didn't give us things for us to destroy. He gave us things to manage it. And I really believe in order for us to be 
godly managers, all the things that God has entrusted us with, we have to grow up in sonship. We have to mature in this love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And so I hope this bless you tonight. If it bless you tonight, give the Lord Jesus Christ a hand out of prayer. And for all of you who are still tuning in online, I want to take, first of all, I want to thank you. I want to pray with you before I close out. I want to thank you for taking time out of your evening to tune into this Bible study. Listen to it. You came in on the end of it. Go back over and listen to it. Go back over and listen to it more than one time. Go back over and listen to you get all of the milk out of the message. Go back over until you begin to gain hold of the beat out of the message so that you can begin to, to mature in this thing and you can begin to regurgitate and speak it out of your spirit to somebody else and teach somebody else some things because now it's in you. Now you're a living epistle of it. That's what God intended for us to do, us to begin to grow up and mature so when we begin to start taking over territory, special territories that's occupied by the enemy, keeping people in bondage and in darkness. It's time for us to go out and set the captives free. How? With the message of reconciliation that's filled with love, that same love that saved us, that's the same love that we use to save them. I'm telling you, Pastor Sam, I thank you all for tuning in tonight. I hope this bless you. If it bless you, there's information online you saw in the ground at New Foundation Church. We are good ground. We are ground that yields an increase. I believe that because we are a supernatural church, build a supernatural people, expect the supernatural occurrences to take place each and every day in our life. Not just when we come here in fellowship, but when we're out and about in our community, on our job, or even when we're in our car. We want it to take place in our life. And I believe where you plan at where is where you learn from. Is where you grow from. If you're seeing results in your life, listen, we have an inbox on our on our page. Send us your testimony. We want to hear from you. We will respond back to you promptly because I want to hear the testimonies that are taking place in your life as you view this ministry by live stream here on Facebook Live. So I want to say God bless you. Also, tune in tomorrow, my hour of power tomorrow at noontime on my personal page. You're going to be blessed by it. If you didn't get to see my, my one on yesterday, tune in on my page. I got it still up there. It'll bless you. It will help you to keep your mind stayed on to be a kingdom child or kingdom man or kingdom woman. So that as you walk in your kingdom sonship, you'll see the power thereof that's manifested in you. Not in your life, but in the lives of other people that you share this message. For all of you again, I bless your seed and the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ that our bountiful harvest will yield and be returning back unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good night.